Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this quick tip video, well, it's a little bit longer than a quick tip because I'm actually covering several different kinds of tips in this video in regards to using rare earth magnets on jigs that we use in the shop. Uh, what I'll be covering is how to install these rare earth magnets, how to glue them, how to get glue to release so you can recover your magnets, and how to get these leveled down to a surface so it stays smooth. Like this is a stop block here for using with a fence and a miter gauge. And you can put this on your tabletop and use it as a stop block. And this will stay in place rather than having to clamp the stop block in place. The magnets will hold it in place here against your fence and then you can move your piece through safely through the saw blade. And I offset the magnets on this because sometimes if you get over this miter track here, you want to be able to get your magnets to hold without getting in the middle of that where it just doesn't want to stay in position. It wants to go one way or the other. So you can get this to go one way or the other against your fence and not have to worry about that. So, so stay tuned here and I'll show you how I do this. Okay, I've got this block glued up together and now I'm going to do is skim these edges to get them good and flat and square and then it'll be also at a perfect three inches and then I'll mark on top here three inches so I'll always know I have to add that measurement to my fence whenever I do some cuts. I'm going to use this as a stop block like when I use a miter fence and then I can stop my piece up to this and go beyond that. Of course the fence will be located further over in those cases or I might even have a different kind of fence on here so that I can have it over more. Anyways I'm going to trim this to a perfect three inches all the way around. Got one edge here that I got flattened so I can have a good alignment there. Okay, and then something I'm going to do is to make a dust relief kerf on a bottom edge here. Good uh, sawdust kerf relief on here now. Next step is going to be to what this video, another part of this video is about, is putting the uh, rare earth magnets into these jigs that we make for helping us make various cuts. Also, this is uh, one that I use for at the bandsaw for push and work through. And as you can see, I've done this a few times here with this. Got a rare earth magnet. I'm going to show you how I get that out of there. Get the glue to release. Then I'm going to make a new handle and put the magnet in this. And I've got a special Forstner bit that I got a hold of. It's an 18 millimeter bit that makes this fit more perfectly. That's a rather, you know, three quarter inch Forstner bit. It's the closest thing for these that we have in most of our Forstner bits and it leaves it's a little bit oversized so not as quite as a tight fit which means it can move around and come loose on you. Move on here and I'll show you how I do these magnets. Okay now what I'm going to do is to remove this magnet from this old jig and reuse it on a new jig and the way I do that is got a pan here to help kind of contain some of the mess then I've got these pipettes. These are like little plastic uh, turkey basters that I got on Amazon. I'll put a link to these in the description below. And then once you're done using them, they're disposable. Small flat tip screwdriver for digging the magnet out. Some isopropyl alcohol for loosening up the glue that's holding the magnet in place. And I'll show you how that works here. Cap off. Squeeze the turkey baster. Suck up some isopropyl. In this magnet here, what I do is I just kind of drip the stuff in around there a little bit. Let that sit for a while and do its job until it starts to loosen up. Sometimes you may need to add a little extra alcohol in here to get it to penetrate all the way. I think this was an epoxy glue that I used to put this one in with. There, it's finally came loose. Comes pretty clean. Hardly any glue residue on there at all. I'll clean this up a little bit and... Uh, then I'll use it on the new jig. I got this 18 millimeter Forstner bit that I bought online on Amazon. I'll put a link to this in the description below. You can see here on this board that I did some test cutting on. Got this 18 millimeter hole here. 
and when I cut that, that magnet fits in there pretty perfectly uh, versus the three-quarter hole, which is this one over here, which you can see a little bit large for holding the magnet. And also another tip I'll show you is how to get the depths on these set so that you've got a flush even surface here once the magnet's in there and glued. What I do is oftentimes I either don't drill it deep enough so the magnet's a little bit proud of the surface or it's a little bit below the surface because I went too deep. So what I try to do is get just a tiny tad deeper, put the magnet in so it's got enough room for the glue and everything. And then I'll go to my sander. I've got this rigid belt and spindle oscillating sander. Then I can sand the surface down smooth to be flush with the magnet, and that'll hold a lot better. If it's recessed in there, this magnet can have a tendency to be trying to pull, out, pull itself out of that hole, and then the glue can fail on you. I'll sand it so it's perfectly flat, and then they stay in there for a lot longer for me. Okay, I've got a little bit of a start on getting this hole drilled here for this magnet with this 18 millimeter Forstner bit. And what I'll do is I'll keep going down until I get it deep enough so this sits just below the surface a little bit. Right now it's pretty close, but just a little bit more that I need to go. Yeah, that feels pretty good. What I'll do is get this glued in place here now with some epoxy glue. Then I'll go to my sander, smooth this over so that it's good and flush. I have my handle here that I'm going to put this magnet into where I drilled that out with the Forstner bit. Stick this magnet in, I'll glue it in place. It's just below the surface of the wood a little bit so I can flush it down. Get it to come out again here. And now uh, another kind of tip do here is it's a little bit cold weather here right now and oftentimes with these epoxy glues the resin bottle will tend to congeal. It kind of gets really thick and it looks like it's totally worthless. I know some woodworkers think it's um, totally ruined and no longer usable so they'll toss it. What you can do is you can take a heat gun or I take a hair dryer and warm it up. I would leave it sitting in the stand here and I'll remove the hardener bottle and just warm up the resin bottle until it gets soft and more in a fluid form. Then I can use it and mix up my epoxy and then glue in my magnet. I notice on this hair dryer here the low setting doesn't give me very much heat at all. It's just kind of a warm air. So I have to go to the high setting but you want to be careful too when you're doing this that you don't overheat it and damage or melt your bottle. That makes it flow a lot better there. Then the hardener always seems to flow pretty easily, you know, regardless. I suppose if it gets really cold, it'll get a little harder to work with that. Got some equal amounts there. Stir it up with the stick. Then I'll put some in the hole here where I want to stick the magnet. Get that smeared around it good. Then I'll stick the magnet in there. Press it in place. Get a little bit of squeeze out, so I'll rub that off with some paper towels. That'll do it pretty good. I will let this glue sit up. The glue wants to tend to push it up a little bit, so I'm put a little clamp on there to hold it in place and keep it recessed in there so it doesn't rise above. Once it sets up, this is like a uh, six minute epoxy glue. I'll give it about 10-15 minutes before I start sanding it to get this flush. Glue seems to be pretty hard now, but I'm going to give it some more time, maybe about a half hour up to an hour to really set up. And if you can see there, I stuck a nut in there to go underneath the clamp here because sometimes the jaws of this clamp might be wider than what the magnet is that I'm trying to hold in place. In that case, it's not going to keep that magnet seated all the way down to the bottom. So I just added a small nut in there to go underneath the clamp face, keep it down in there. Another tidbit for you is when you're using these epoxies, using it on a wax paper here, you can often uh, peel this right off. comes off like that with your stick, and then you can peel this off further off your stick. And 
you know, kind of recover your stick a little bit. Then take a side cutters and just nip this off a little bit here. And you got a clean stick to work with here again until you get it down so far that you can't hold on to it anymore without getting your fingers full of glue. Good little tricks for doing some of those glue ups and also to keep your glue working by warming up that resin bottle if it congeals on you. Okay, the glue on this magnet here is pretty well dry now. So what I'm going to do is I have this wood chisel. It's kind of a utility chisel, so it's not one of my fine woodworking chisels, but it's good for some utility purposes like this. What I'll do is I kind of scrape off a little bit of squeeze out here of the glue. Scrape off that excess glue there so I'm not sanding off too much of that and clogging up my sanding belt. So it's pretty good there. It's slightly beneath the surface of the wood here, so I'm going to go to the sander now, get this sanded up good and smooth. Now I'm going to hold this up to the belt here like this and get that smoothed down. Okay, I've got that good, perfectly smooth surface. It'll stick onto things very well now. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, please give me a like. And also please share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. Also, if you want to see what I may come up with again in the future, please subscribe. And also hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on anything. Also, I love to hear feedback and comments from everyone. As I say, if the women don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you.